What's up everyone? I'm Xavier Spade, your Zoom show guru, and we're back for a third video on how to make your Zoom shows not suck. We already went over your internet needs and computer needs, we built a computer, as well as talked about cameras. Today we're going to be going over lighting solutions to step up your visual game so you don't look like a bunch of boxes or worse, like everyone else. Let's just go. Now, lighting isn't as hard as some make it seem. Of course, for what we're going to be covering here, uh, it's quite simple. But there are some things that I think people should understand about lighting to get the most out of what they're trying to do and the most out of the space as well. As with everything, there are super cheap and super expensive solutions that frankly, I don't think 99% of us will ever need. But I think before we get into types of lighting, we should get into overhead lighting. Frankly, turn it off, turn it off, don't use it. It's terrible for camera work and you need to get some spotlighting. Anyway, let's get into soft lighting and hard lighting basics. It's something that was taught to me in the simplest terms and I'm gonna explain that to you. So let's get started. This is a concept that for some reason I couldn't get until a good friend of mine, Rob Fisher, taught me. But the way he explained it was amazing and you should go check out his work. He filmed the trailer for Xavier's Ride as well, Xavier's Rise as well. So definitely go show him some love. But what is hard and soft lighting? So when you're talking about this in the simplest terms, you're talking about how shadows are cast. If you look at some hard lighting, uh, if you look at some hard lighting, you can see the lines of shadows will be very uh, sharp. And soft lighting, is, it kind of blends. It's just the opposite. The shadows blend into the light instead of those hard shadow lines. So the question is, how do we make hard and soft light? Well, to keep it simple, it's based on the size of the light. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Peace out. I'm a scrub, but you still love me. Obviously, that's not enough information. When we talk about the size of the light, we don't actually mean the actual size of the light, but how big the light is compared to where the light is hitting. So, the sun is huge, but to us in the sky, it's a tiny spot of light, so it creates a hard light. When it's cloudy, the light is diffused by the clouds, basically creating a large softbox in the sky. That's why if you get a cheap softbox like the ones that use those fluorescent bulbs, it comes with a big diffuser and reflector. It's taking a small point of light and creating a large point of light from it. We're gonna go over some cheap lighting solutions and how you can make it look professional. So to start, let's talk about the cheapest lights you can get, in my opinion, and how you can make them look good. And that's gonna be clamp lights. You can go to a department store or a Home Depot and get a few of these for about five bucks a piece. They're super cheap and if you could swing it, I'd suggest getting about four. I'll explain why later when we talk about setting up lights, but Three is usually a minimum. Also be sure when you're buying the bulbs to get the same colored bulbs. And cause the last thing you want is to have a bunch of different colors. Now these clamp lights are small and they can create some hard light, but there's an easy solution to help get rid of that. You can literally put a sheet of diffusion paper or even like white tissue paper to help diffuse the light a bit if you have the space. And if you can, put the diffusion paper a bit away from the light and it'll make the light even softer. So something I did for a while, actually right here, was I used paper towel. I taped it to the end of uh, the light <laughs> and created a makeshift softbox and it worked quite well and worked really good. Now there's some downsides to clamp lights and cheap soft boxes that you can get on like Amazon and stuff like that. One being is that the light has to be clamped to something. And the big thing is you can't adjust the brightness. So what happens is sometimes people move the lights back and that can work, but then you're shrinking the size of the light and you'll start to get hard lights again. So you might wanna be careful with that. But in a pinch, there is a very workable solution. And if you're just getting started, it doesn't take a lot to improve your lighting. So we're gonna talk about modifiers. Okay, so a lot of times when people are talking about uh, lighting, you'll hear them talk about, I'm gonna get a soft box. Soft boxes are the beginning of the decimation of your wallet. You can get cheap, affordable ones, but if you're like me, you immediately see the reason why lighting can get super expensive. There's not one perfect solution, and there's, there's so many things that can go. There's lighting, power issues, size issues, mounting issues. 
So for me, there's been this constant search for new lighting. And because of that, I've gotten a few different types. Actually, you could see some of them here. And some of them are good for setting up and not moving like in a studio. Some that are semi-portable and some that are totally portable. All have advantages and disadvantages. But like I said, there's no one perfect solution for everything. So some of the cheap boxes that you'll get from like Amazon and things like that, use the same type of bulbs that you use in a clamp light. They'll be like fluorescent lights. And some of them can hold between one or five lights depending on the, the set that you get. That's a decent solution if you have the space, but frankly, they're pretty terrible. You can't control the light at all. They're just there. It's, a lot of times they're pretty cheaply made, but they'll definitely get you by. In reality, when you're looking for a soft box, that's kind of like the generic thing. They're not the lights. They're an add-on to lights. So it's not something you typically buy as a light as you get higher in quality. See things like Bowen's mount that most lights and flash mounts use. And the softbox is a type of light modifier. So I have a few here uh, that I'm gonna show you and then we'll move on to different types of lights. Okay, so let's go over some modifiers that you might see on the market. So this is, this is a pretty affordable monitor I got from Godox. I actually use this for flashes, but uh, you can use this for lights actually. So I actually have one of these right here. It's a bigger version and it's a double diffusion thing. So, so double diffusion, man, that's loud, is basically the light sets up over here in this end. And then the light sets up in this end over here and it hits an internal diffusion paper and that diffuses it and it hits then the uh, bigger diffusion paper and it creates a nice soft big light. Now, this is a small one. And if I were to hook this up right now to what I have here, right, the light would be a little bit harder because now the light is this big. And if I pulled it back, now the light is smaller. So to, the way to combat that is to kind of move it closer and dim it a bit. And now the light is bigger in relation to me. So that's one type of soft box. This is a cheap one, just kind of mounts over a Bowens mount. So it just kind of fits right in. Not too much work, doesn't have a clamp. But I have another one here. And this one I use again for, for flashes. This is a one by three soft box right here. And as you can see in front, I have a grid. And what a grid does is it helps focus the light more so it doesn't spread as much. So if you're trying to light something specific and not light background or anything like that, a grid can help. The downside of a grid is it cuts the amount of light. So sometimes you have to boost the amount of light. But, you know, there's a nice compact little soft box here. Uh, I don't think it's double diffusion, if I remember properly. Yes, it is. This is double diffused. <laughs> So there you go. And, and this wasn't expensive either. This was like 25, 30 bucks. And uh, I do use it just for flashes, but you can use it for regular light as well, because it doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you one other light modifier that I have, and then we'll start talking a little bit more about LED panels and stuff like that. Okay, so this is <laughs> the last modifier that, I'm gonna move back. This is the last modifier I have. This one is pretty big. This is like a big dome. And what this does is it creates a nice big ball of light. So you can set this as an overhead light, point it down. You could point it at something. It comes with a skirt so that you can block light in certain directions. I've only used this a few times. I usually use this when I'm trying to light specific products or something like that. But these are all types of light modifiers. It's not just soft boxes. Soft boxes are not all that light modifiers are. So just something to keep in mind if you're looking for something a little bit better quality, light modifiers are the things you're looking for. Okay, LED panels. So LED or light emitting diode panels are in the last bunch of years becoming more and more affordable. They have lights that could be super bright and portable, super big and expensive. Now I have a few of them here. Uh, as you can see, and we're gonna talk a little bit about them. And I also have a few on my wish list if you want to, frankly, send them as a gift. Just saying, just saying. 
So as the price goes up, the brightness and color accuracy and features go up, but they also tend to use professional lighting systems. And because of that, power systems are usually different than regular batteries or even Sony or Canon batteries that a lot of smaller, cheaper lights use. Some of them are bulky and super, and some are super thin. <laughs> So let's go over some of the lights that I have here. We'll go over the good and bad that I've kind of found out over the years. So you have an idea based on budget, what you're looking at. So this is actually the first light that I ever got. And it was, it was about $40 at the time. And it used AA batteries. And I, I used to just mount this on top of my camera <laughs> and just use it like this. It's got a, an amber diffusion. I don't even think I could take this out to be honest. Oh yeah. It's got a little lock at the bottom so to take this out. And this was okay. I mean, it's a cheap little light. It's got a bunch of LEDs. It got me through, that's for sure. And I still have it. I don't know why I just kept it. It's kind of like nostalgia, I guess. But this is an LED light and it didn't, the batteries didn't last very long. It wasn't very color accurate. It's very harsh, very small. But you know, for 20, 30 bucks, what, what can you really expect? So for a long time, this was a light. And then I, I had these big, kind of like plate LED panels and uh, they eventually broke down. They, they actually had a noise to them. It was like this weird pinging noise that would always come up. But obviously I don't use any of that anymore. But that was a good light, but we're gonna go into lights now that are actually still available. So this is the Amron ALM9, okay? There's a nice little LED light. Uh, it has a little magnetic diffuser. Uh, rechargeable batteries and it comes with a, a little stand so you can mount this on a light stand or your camera and you can control the brightness with this so let's turn this all the way down so that's the lowest it'll go and that's the brightest it'll go so like if I put this here right you could see that as I get closer the light will actually seem to get softer and then if I turn it up and pull it away you know what I th actually what I think I'm gonna do is turn off the lights at some point and explain this to you but this is a nice portable light that actually lasts a super long time. And I ended up getting like five or six of these and I just throw these in my camera bag and use them as I go. And I, I still have them. They're, I've had them over almost two years now and they hold up. And then uh, because this is magnetic, you could put little gel. <laughs> so because this is magnetic, you could put little gels on it and stuff like that. So you just stick it right there and you have a nice little color controlled light. These were like $45. I think they're still about that price, but eventually I wanted something a little more. So we're gonna go into that. This was a light that my friend told me about actually. Uh, <laughs> this is a newer LED 308. I don't know if this is still around, but at the time I got these on eBay for like $30. I think my friend Michael Muldoon told me about these lights and I just bought a bunch of them. And they were okay. You know, they're a little heavier, they're a little beefier. They, these are batteries that start to use like the Sony NPF batteries, I think they're called. They have like two metal prongs and they stick in. But it has these little diffu uh, diffusion plates. It comes with three, uh, clear one, you know, white, uh, amber, and blue. And these are a little bit bigger, these were cool. In fact, in my early YouTube videos, these are the lights that I used. These are the lights that were kind of set up off camera before I got a ring light, which I should show you too. <laughs> I have like two of them. Oh, I have too many lights. So yeah, so this was a cool light. And you know, for the price, they're good. You can also power this by plugging it in if you have a power adapter. And it comes with a handle so you can hold it or you can mount this directly to your camera and it has a threading for a tripod stand or a light stand and that was kind of cool but eventually i wanted something a little bit more so i started getting into rgb lights so this was the first one i got because i didn't really know what i wanted this is a we light rb 08p that i don't know and these are kind of cool so this is a light that it's not just white so right now what you're seeing is regular white light but if we go to the mode you can start getting your rgb yeah so you can start getting your rgb and changing the color of it so you see the colors are changing a bit so this is a cool little light you know like you can you can get some nice accent lighting i actually have colored lights in the back which we're going to talk about in a second and these are good. You know, the thing I didn't like about them was that 
they didn't seem to last very long in terms of battery life, and you can't use them when they're plugged in. That's a big thing for me, because especially here, like I have a light that I can plug in and just leave there. But in a pinch, these are nice for accent lighting, and you can get some good colors off of this. It has special effects, and this was about 70 bucks. So for 70 bucks each, I bought like two or three of them. And uh, yeah, they, they did some work. And in fact, before I moved to this space, the lights that were in the background that were colored were these lights right here. So I would just kind of leave them against the wall, turn on the light and just let them illuminate There's a background. So then I stepped up and I got these. This, this is an Atom Cube RX-1. These lights are a little bit pricier. This light was $170 but it does a lot more. It has a Bluetooth mesh network so you can communicate with multiple lights of the same type. You can control everything. It has special effects. It's a little bit more durable. It has more mounting options and they sell, this is a diffuser that I bought, and they sell like diffusion panels and grids for these lights. But essentially what you get is this. And this light is great. This is a great light. So let's change this, okay. And if I want to change the light, I could just scroll up or down and the light changes. And this one is also brighter. So, you know, it's a nice bright, like light. And this look kind of sickly. <laughs> it's kind of gross, to be honest. But there you go, right? So it was a nice light. And actually I have one of them right here that's pointing at my back as a hair light. So I like them. And the cool thing about this, they're USB-C powered and you can use them while they're being charged. So if you have it kind of semi-permanent, you can have this light kind of just set up there and turn it on when you need it or control it with the phone app. It comes with an app on the phone. So something to keep in mind. Uh, recently I got these. This is a pocket light F7 mini. And I mostly got these cause I just wanted more mini RGB lights for spaces and different areas like that. And it's super simple to use, you know, see that you can change colors right here. different white balances, different special effects. And, and this is the same thing, it has special effects also. Uh, the downside to this is they're not very bright, they are very small. But, you know, for a small space, for something very tiny, these, these things are great. They're easy to carry around. They don't take up much space and they have these nice strong magnets. I don't have anything magnetic here. But nice strong magnets that you could just clip onto something and, and it'll be there and they're good quality they're lightweight and these things actually come with a diffuser and a grid they come with it which is awesome so you get this whole little package and i think these were like 70 bucks as well and i have a couple of these it also comes with this mount so you can adjust it and put it on your tripod and also put it on a light stand if you want or your camera so that's cool, that was like 70 bucks. Now those are cool solutions if you're kind of somebody that's on the go and just needs things that you can set up real quick. But what about like a, like you wanna just have the lights there? Soft boxes can be very big and bulky, mostly because of the space you need for the soft box. So I decided to look into lights like this. So this was a light set that I've actually told a few people to buy so far. And the reason why is because for about $370, you get three good quality lights with barn doors that can help keep the light from spilling where you don't want it. It comes with a diffusion panel that you can remove. It comes with a, a good sturdy mount system so you can adjust where this is pointing. It's Wi-Fi controlled and it's RGB also. Now, if you're looking for color perfectness, usually RGB lights are not the way to go. But for like Zoom shows and stuff like that, they're just fine. So right now behind me, I have two of them. One over here, one over there. They're just mounted to the wall, pointing on my background, just giving some color. And that's their whole purpose. This is, the, this is an extra light. I actually don't use this light, but I could if I wanted to. They're nice, they're good lights. And I, honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't beat the price. I really couldn't. These things, for the price and for the space, I think they're amazing. I don't need, you know, sometimes you'll watch YouTube shows and review shows and they talk about oh, CRI index and all this other stuff. Listen, if the light does what you need it to do, 
and that's all it needs to be. I'm still on the search for a light that does everything, but these lights that I've accumulated kind of fill that niche, you know, that need. This is a good light. I'll leave the links for this stuff in the description below. But this is a, a nice set right here, and it comes with the barn doors, which I actually like a lot. They're uh, also battery powered if you want NF, you know, the NPF batteries, and they come with a power adapter. So you can just plug that in and uh, have power for life, as long as you pay your electric bill. So I, I was having trouble kind of figuring out why I, the light that I was trying to get wasn't looking the way I wanted. And it boiled down to the size of the light. These lights are great, I enjoy them a lot, but I wanted something just a little bit more. So this light right here is the light that I ended up getting. This is now one of my overhead lights right here. So this points directly down onto the table right here. This is the a newer light, this is the NL1320. And this is a nice size light. It's a little bit beefy, a little bit hefty. You know, it's not super lightweight. This one has some, <laughs> meat to it and this is a bicolor light which means this usually this only does daylight temperature colors warm light to cool light it doesn't do RGB at all it comes with the barn doors which again I really like and this is how you control the whole shebang right here one is for white light one is for yellow light so if you want maximum brightness, you do have to turn them both up because half of the lights are yellow, half of them are blue. So there is that downside. There are more expensive lights that kind of counteract that. This kind of uh, light doesn't use Sony NPF batteries. This is when you're starting to get to those professional light systems. This uses a V-mount battery. A V-mount battery is uh, you know, very expensive. I think they're about $500 a battery. They do last a hell of a long time, but that is one of the downsides of getting a light like this if you are looking to use battery power. But this is a great light if you just need a studio light, if you're going to be powering this. I love this light a lot, which is why I got a couple of them. And that's what's sitting right above me right now. It's actually right there. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you one more light, but I have to take it down because it's the light that I use the most, but it is a really, really good light. So let me do that right now. Okay. so. Excuse the darkness, I'm gonna lift my hat a little bit. So this right here is the Godox ML60. This is the whole light right here. This is what was lighting me from over there. And this is a nice compact light. I got this because it's super bright, it's super powerful, it can be used mobily. So I'm gonna set this up right now. And it comes with a cheap modifier or you can add like a bones mount adapter to something like this. So let's just set this up real quick. We'll put the batteries in. This is everything it comes with, by the way. Like I, I didn't buy anything for this right here. This is everything that this comes with. Okay, so let's turn it on. Look at how bright that is. That is a tiny light. Now usually I have it behind some diffusion, you know, but look at that. Let me just bounce it off of the wall. <laughs> That's bouncing off the wall and it's still really bright. So I'm gonna turn this down, it comes with a remote. I'm gonna turn this down to 3%, which is what I used it at before I got a diffuser. And you'll see how, how this light looks. So that's 3%. Now this is a hard light, okay? Actually, let me turn off these lights. Okay, so this is, the, this is a hard light. So you see the shadow of my nose, you see how defined that is? That's a hard light. And if I were to pull this farther back and then turn it up, you see how defined that is, right? That's what we're saying when we say hard light. So if I were to push this through, let's say something like this big ass ball diffuser. Let's turn this up. So now this is different, right? You see now the shadow of my nose is less defined, right? Like it's kind of just softly wrapping around. That's soft light. That's what you hear. Oh shit. <laughs> that was amazing. So that's what you hear people talking about when they're talking about hard light and soft light. Look at that, 1%. That's amazing. This light is so powerful. 
So this is a light that I got for this one purpose. I wanted something that was semi-portable and I'll start using a couple of the other lights so you can see how those work in general too. Okay, this is the little Amarin light that I, I used to love a lot. I still love it a lot. Right. Let's turn it up. Okay, that was, that's maximum brightness right there. So if I'm here, you see right here the shadow? That's a hard light, okay? That's what you're trying to avoid. Now I can do away with it by bringing this closer and then dimming the light and the, the shadow gets a little smaller. But because this is a small light, there's only so much you can do. Now let's take the Atom Cube light. So this is at 6%. You could already see the light does look a little bit different. It's still a little hard. So let's put a diffuser on it. Let's see how that will look. Okay, so this is the light with the diffuser. Again, not much of a difference. It dims the light a little bit, but it's still the same size. So I'm gonna put this light, you saw, now th this is the same exact light that I'm gonna put back, and you're gonna see the difference with the soft box that I'm using for this, even though, you see that? It's still kind of harsh. So let's do that now. So already, you can see the difference with the quality of the light. Now what you're seeing behind, this is actually a hair light that's hitting me. So that's why I have light going on here. Let me turn that off. Okay, that's completely, so this is just now the studio lights. You're getting some studio light, right? That's, look at how soft that is. That's with the soft box, double diffused. And then that little light that you saw before that was so harsh is now much softer and, and much nicer. Let's turn it up. So I usually have it up. There we go, right? And you can see the shadow of my nose isn't as defined. So let's turn on all the lights again. And there you go, here we are. <laughs> all right, so keep in mind that these are just the type of lights that I have for my needs. But the types and prices of lights go into the thousands of dollars and thousands of types just for one light. Of course, I don't need that, but they are out there. So those are just some of the lights that I use. But let's go over how I set them up so that you can start setting up a show for yourself as well. By the way, the links for everything will be in a description below. It's an Amazon affiliate link, so if you do decide to purchase something, I will get a kickback, but it doesn't cost you anything at all. It just helps support me and this channel, and that's about it. So the typical lighting system that people uh, learn is a three-point lighting system. You have your key light, your fill light, and your hair light. What are those things? <laughs> so your key light is gonna be your main light. That's the light that's creating the most light for you. Then you have a fill light, which is just there to fill in the darker spots. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a light. It could be a reflector or something white that will just reflect the light off and fill in those shadows, which I'll show you throughout all this. And then you have a hair light, which just kind of hits you and separates you from the background. So I'm gonna turn off every light in here and then we're gonna go through the lights one by one. And I'm actually gonna change the light that's here and put in something off to the side that we're gonna use as a fill light instead. All right, so now all you're seeing in the background is the little thing that I have going on, but this is no light whatsoever. And if you're using a webcam, <laughs> oh boy, are you looking like crap right now? Because what a webcam does is it tries to adjust so it'll start to become grainy because it's making the sensor more sensitive or it'll slow down the frames per second to allow more light in something else you don't want to happen especially while you're doing a show okay so let's start with the key light bam so there we go so you can see the look it doesn't look bad actually i think this is kind of dramatic if you're trying to do that kind of thing but i feel like there's a lot missing now you saw how it looked before with all the colors. So you can see how lighting makes a big difference in what you're doing. So let's just adjust this a little bit. There we go. Now that's one light, just one light coming at me. You can see the dark shadow and you can see if I use my hand, it starts to fill that in. So this is how a reflector works. So if you wanted to, you could take something white and bounce it. Actually, I'll be right back. Okay, so what I have here is just some like a uh, science project stuff and look at that already much better right just with a bam look at how good that looks and that's one light 
and nothing else. And I just have this here to reflect some light into me. Let's do it like this. There you go. And now I think I look much better like this. But since I have other lights, let's use them. So let's put in a fill light. Now that was a type of fill light, the reflector. This is a different type of fill light. There we go. So now I have a light on me coming from another direction, filling in those shadows a little bit. They're not as bright. Of course, this light over here is smaller, so you can see the shadow is much harsher. Hard light, uh, soft light, hard light. <laughs> I think that's a perfect representation. They're both the same distance away. One light is about this big, the other light is <laughs> much bigger. But a fill light does a nice job of filling that in. And now let's put on a hair light on me. And there you go. Now you see you get a different kind of light behind me, kind of separating me just a little bit. So this is a basic three light setup. Now this can be rearranged however you want. For instance, you could turn off your fill light and just have the hair, the hair light and the key light. You can turn all that off and just have something like this, or you can put the light farther behind you so you get more of a silhouette. A lot of things you could do with lighting. But now that we have that, you can see how lighting will affect what you're doing. So I'm gonna turn everything back on the way I had it usually, and we'll continue on with the video. So what I have here though, is I have my key light, then I have an overhead light that's kind of mimicking my fill light. I have my hair light, and then I have two lights on my background. So that's how I'm doing my light setup in particular. You don't have to do it like this. It may not be the setup for you, but play around with your lights, play around with what you have, and come up with something unique for you and, and your style and how you want to look on camera. Okay, so now that you have your lights, depending on where you got them or if they came in a kit or not, you may need to find ways to mount your lights. I personally don't like light stands, so if I can help, I kind of just mount it places. It just declutters everything up. So I use wall mounts, I have uh, these friction arms and, and things like that. I'll show you a type of friction arm. So this is one type of friction arm. This is a Manfrotto arm. It just kind of tightens and clamps everything down like this. So you can move this and articulate it however you want. Clamps to a bar or a pole. Uh, I would sometimes drill two by fours into the wall and just mount it to that. And I know some of you can't, so that's fine. And then uh, right here, it comes with a light mount. Now what I have on here now is for cameras. I was using this for my live stream, but right there, this is basically the top of a light stand that you can just mount to. So it's right there on the, uh, on the friction arm. Now there's a type of light that I'm not gonna cover mostly because the bulbs are a bit older and they create a ton of heat, the, you know, halogens and things like that. And, and frankly, for the price, I think nowadays LEDs, LEDs, LEDs are just a better solution if you're going to look at, at for lights. There's other types of lights out there. Many of them have different ranging prices and they have different bells and whistles. And what you need to do is seriously consider not only your budget, but your space and your needs. One thing is for sure, you will need lights if you want your Zoom shows and videos to look like a professional show. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell if you wanna be notified of the next video, which we're gonna be covering audio. And I'll see you guys then. Peace out. I'm a scrub, but you still love me, you love me. Even though I don't make no money. You've been there when the times get ugly. I'm a scrub, but you still love me, you love me. I'm a scrub, but you still love me, you love me. Even though I don't make no money You've been there when the times get ugly I'm